And I told her, I don't care if he is her husband right now. It's time to rise from the grave, pour yourself a cup, and enjoy the coffee crypt. Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Good the Coffee Crypt. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, it's like that like week after the holidays where I know. Oh, boy, the 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 adjustment back is <laughs> is something it's else. Rough. Do you feel like it gets harder like the older we get? Oh, I used to not yeah. care. Like it was like no big deal. Now well, it's like funny. I used to, you know, we put away our, our Christmas stuff this morning um, or this this weekend in general. And we um, and normally I'm like, oh, I love uh, keeping things up a little bit later. Now I'm like, just get this crap out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of looking at it. <laughs> we still have all of ours up. It's, it's on my agenda for probably uh, tomorrow, maybe or today. Yeah. Today. Well, maybe. now like. My mom is coming through me now. It's like I can hear because she was like that. It was like a week after Christmas. That's it. <laughs> New Year's Day. Get it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think I think um O is gonna want to help put things away because he likes yeah. being a part of stuff. So he was gone most of this weekend um with his dad. And so I was like, Well, I'll wait till he gets back. We can do it together. And um by the time we got back, you know, Saturday night, it was too late, obviously, to do. I was, like, not doing it. But it was, um, yeah, it's time It's time for it to go away. I, yeah. Yeah. Although, I am I am implementing a new tradition in our house. Oh, uh, yeah? It's not a new tradition. It's a very old one. But I feel robbed as a, a, a Italian-American. My family uh -huh. never celebrated La Befana. Oh, so okay. I am all for it now so now my son will be visited by the italian christmas witch because i think it is such a cute weird cute. thing yeah um so and she the whole thing with her is like she's like a poor old lady so she can't afford big gifts so it's like candies or whatever like in the stocking so it's nothing big um yeah. he can't do candy yet so i just got him a, like a little um like oh, a lot yeah. on a book to like learn about it you know mm -hmm. Um, Dan got a Lego set, so he's, <laughs> you yeah. know, he got spoiled by Bufana. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah, just a little something. It's like, uh, she's supposed to come the night of the 5th, and then the morning of the 6th, you open, it's like the epiphany. It's like that old, little, yeah. little Christmas is what they call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's like the the it's, it's like the, you know the actual twelve days of Christmas thing. It starts on the twenty fifth and then it ends on the sixth. Oh, okay. That's supposed yeah. to be. I'm pretty sure that's the twelve days. Being, but yeah. Hmm. Okay, that's cute. Yeah. But anyway, so as I'm saying, I want to get all the crap down. I'm like, mm, just one more excuse to give presents. One more thing, yeah. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. But lots of lots to come in the new year, though. Yeah, I feel like 2022 started this trend of like overwhelming horror stuff. And then like last year was the same. And so I anticipate this year to be the same where it's just constant stuff going on There's in the always, horror community. Always something now. And it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, I mean, not always amazing stuff. Like I'm hearing uh, Night Swim being teared to shreds at the moment. I might not yeah, even... Cat Kat texted me right before we started recording and was like, it was so bad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely torn to shreds. Like, I I, I was going to see it Monday. Don't know if I will. And maybe I'll see yeah, something I'm gonna else wait. Wait for streaming. I, yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm like, do I want to bother? Even just for, like, the sake of, like, going in. Because I'm all about, like, going with your own opinions. and Yeah. But when there's, like, an overwhelming majority, you're like, mm, I don't know. Well, I think the, the negative things I'm hearing about it are all the things I said when we covered the trailer that I was worried was going to happen. Yeah, you called it. 
So, I mean, so, yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see if it like, I mean, I'm going, I'm going to watch it. I just, but I'm not going to pay to watch it. Yeah, no, I'm going to watch it, you know, but yeah, you know, I'll probably just wait till free streaming somewhere. Sorry. Yeah. But, but yeah, you know, so, we'll get, we'll get yeah, to the news story. Plenty. Blumhouse might be turning things around. We'll see. Hopefully with, with a little bit of help from some yeah. friends. <laughs> we'll I know the Beatles song is like playing very loudly in my head. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thing. So for trailers, um, this was the, the one I'm going to start us off with. I hadn't heard anything about until I was like trying to look to see what trailers had come out recently. Um, but it's the Bunker Heights teaser trailer. Um, there's, I didn't see a release date for this, um, in the article about it, but, um, essentially the, the trailer, it takes, um, us through this speech of what I assume is a political official mm -hmm. about making the town great again. And so he like is talking about all the things that he wants to do to make the little town of Bunker Heights better. And meanwhile, we are seeing a bunch of people die. There's like a monster or something going on and, and it's, um, I'm not, it's like, it, I feel like it gave some information, but it was also very withholding. Like, I'm not a hundred percent sure what this is about yet. And I think yeah. that's fine. Like, I don't want, I, you know, like, I don't want too much given away, but this gave me such void energy. Like, have you yeah. seen the void, right? Yeah. With like the, the people in the certain like parts of the town and like the certain buildings. And then there's like something bad that, I don't know, like there was just parts of it that I was like, oh, it's kind of like makes me feel like um like the void but um but yeah i mean it's um it feels very b film i will say mm -hmm. that um which is doesn't really mean anything, you know yeah um but i thought i think it looks interesting at least because there seemed to be some human on human violence as well as a monster so i'm kind of wondering like is this going to be Lovecraftian? Like, where is this? What's the things go? What's going on with this town? I love like yeah. small town horror and stuff. And this kind of like checked all of those boxes. So I'm curious to see what they do with it. What did, um, what'd you think? Yeah. It's a little, the void meets the purge meets. I some... thought of the purge too. Yeah. Because yeah, cause you're definitely getting those political undertones for sure. And you know, this creature is definitely going to be an allegory for something. Um, yeah. But like yeah like are, like are people being sacrificed to this creature for the betterment of the town like or or some right like something um it looks yeah. it, it looks fun i mean the little glimpses we get of the creature i couldn't quite tell if some shots were cg or if some shots were practical what so it kind of looked like a mix of both maybe i think it looked like a mix the hand scenes looked like prosthetics and it did look like a prosthetic, prosthetic, so really i got him excited for I'm always excited about that. Yeah. Like if you're going to like really go that extra mile and use makeup and effects and all that good stuff, like please I will give it. it a, yeah. It, it looks better. You know, I mean, even if it's yeah. not the quality stuff, like at least it feels real, you know? Yeah. And that really can, that really can kind of like fix what like maybe a little bit of bad writing or a little bit of bad directing does because sure. it's still submersive enough. They're like, or immersive enough, immersive enough. They are like, you still buy into it. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like, I think it's like if, if most of your budget goes into your creature design, you can forgive a lot of the other stuff. Oh, 100% agree. Yeah. I'm but way more lenient on stuff like that. Yeah, I have a feeling this is probably going to be like a behind the paywall, a behind a paywall sort of streaming movie, kind of like how Dark Harvest was a couple of months ago, where it's just going to be like a ten dollar rental or something. Like, yes, because I don't, I don't know any studio that was attached to it. I don't remember seeing the trailer. Do you remember the studio? So I don't know. It could be. Something I know there was much. in the article about it. There was a bunch of names thrown around and stuff that they'd done, but it was nothing I knew what it was. No, it's definitely not a Shutter movie, but it, maybe Screenbox can get their hands on it. I don't know. Oh, maybe. But it feels like it's maybe like a Screenboxy movie. Um, yeah, definitely not something you're going to be able to go see in a theater. No, no, probably no. not. No, but I'm definitely. This is you know I don't check out every B movie that we cover, but I think uh, this is one that I I, I 
I love a good creature feature. I dig the premise. Yeah. I'm probably going to check this one out. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I tell you, especially because The Void was one of my first watches um, this past October. And I loved it. I'd never seen it, you know. And so it was it was really good. And because it mind and I am a purge franchise fanatic. I love that franchise. That is one of my like favorite, more newer like franchises. I love it so much. So this, so it having a couple of those feelings, yeah, it definitely got me interested. I don't know. I mean, you just talking about the purge, even just for like 30 seconds, maybe want to go back and rewatch. <laughs> They're all on. What are they all on? I don't know. I think I own them though. <laughs> Netflix right now. They're on Netflix. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 Cause I was looking for Puss in Boots for my son and I put, you know, PU and Purge came up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so. he'll, he'll, yeah. He'll love that. <laughs> yeah. So, I but mean. yeah. I will obviously be rewatching all of them. I love them so much. They are so good. I know. I know we're going to get seven soon, but like, Seven or six. I don't remember which one. Six. Forever Purge was five. Yeah, right. Forever Purge was five. So it's six. six. God, Forever Purge. People were so mad. And I'm just like, well, you being mad told me who you voted for. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I was so, it was so good. I loved everything about it. But anyway. No, it's like a it's a perfect like reap what you sow kind of movie. Um, yeah. It's like, yeah, no. But um, our anyway, next sorry. trailer. Uh, we got up, uh, and I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Uh, mm -hmm. was for the first omen, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we famously got a new exorcist this past year, and that did not entice and excite the fans. Um, and I think a lot of us, a lot, you know, for me, I was definitely like cautiously optimistic based on the trailer. Um, for the lot exorcist, of, the exorcist, sorry. Yeah. Um, I know you had some red flags. A lot of people had red flags, understandably so. Um, mm -hmm. And I think those red flags sort of came to fruition when the movie finally came. This one, however, feels like it's got style. And that was yeah. when I did my short reaction to it in our shorts. Mm -hmm. um, I was like this, you know, the first, the action plays out backwards, which is a really clever. I don't think I've seen that in a trailer before. No, very um, cool. It was very cool. The cinematography, the sound design was really cool. They don't really tell mm -hmm. you much. I mean, the synopsis that we have is like a woman is sent to Rome to the church and then she uncovers sort of the conspiracy around the Antichrist um, and, yep. being, and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, and it's a prequel. So it, it's certainly like, you know, we're not, I guess, I guess the only thing is they're sort of beholden to whatever happens in the Omen. But mm -hmm. I, I, I do, it, it's like, it's a hard line to walk, right, with a prequel. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's like, you don't want to contradict, but you but you also want to add. Um, and it's yeah. such a fine... It's a very it's a delicate fine. balance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. You know, you don't want to take away the power of the original, but you also want to sort of make it better just for like having the prequel exist, right? Like you want to make a perfect companion movie. Um, like the whole, yeah, the whole idea is prequels is you want to sort of elevate the stuff that already exists, you know, mm -hmm. not that all of the omens are amazing, right? Like, oh well, yeah, but there's like four of them, right? Five of them. I don't know. Yeah. And I have not seen all of them. The one I've seen the most is the original. I think I've only seen the original and the remake. And the, the, the remake, which, which I remember the marketing. It came out in 06. So it was like June 6, 2006 or something. Right. I remember that. Yeah. 666. Six, six, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I am excited. I am, I am not just cautiously optimistic. I am actually optimistic because I think this was a really well made trailer. Yeah. I mean, I love trailers that do like this style of music. Mm -hmm. Like where it's like, so if I, can, if I can watch something and the music pulls me in from the trailer, that is, it's like the backwards, but also the music. It's like when you start watching like a trailer and it starts playing like sweet dreams are made of this. You're like, oh, I'm in whatever it is. Yeah, right. Like, I'm there's in. always that like, song or something. There's just something about specific songs or certain styles of music that when mm -hmm. they're used in this manner, especially like you said, like it looks so good doing the backwards thing. Like you're just like, okay. All right. You know, um, I'm not a massive Omen fan as far as like, it's not like, you know, one of my favorite, I think, I think it's a good movie. I think it's fine. Like, 
Um, so from that perspective, I'm not like, I won't be chomping at the bit to go see this. Um, but we'll see, cause this is still technically a teaser, right? So we don't have mm -hmm. like a full picture and maybe the full trailer will get me a little bit more excited. Um, I think it looks really interesting and I don't know if it, maybe it was just me or, or, but like the whole, like, anytime you take someone who goes into like a religious setting you know, and they start to like unravel things. Like I really just really like stuff like that. So I think mm -hmm. it's got some things that it definitely will have that appeal to me, but I'll just see what the full trailer does before I make up my mind about how important it is for me to see it. I think. Yeah. I also hope they don't reveal too much though in the full trailer. That's the other fine line to walk. You never know. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah. Did you see that Netflix, this is like a small side tangent. I know shocker. Um, <laughs> Netflix released that Malignant is now available on Netflix by showing the reveal of the whole movie. Did you see that? No, but I'm not surprised. So they posted Malignant is now available on Netflix and the clip is her pulling With back. Me. Yeah, that like that scene. And Wait, we're that's just the like, reveal. I know that it's an old movie, right? But like showing it like that is very different than like talking about who the killers in Scream are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, anyway. I mean that's like, it's 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 not old though. It's only what it was two two thousand and twenty one. Was it pre pre pandemic or post pandemic? I don't remember. It's a good question. I'm just going to. I saw demanding. it when it was streaming 21. on my. Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's not twenty one. Um, I you know, but I think it's like Netflix is like that thing where like they get a movie and it's like you know people find a love for something that might have been out a couple of years now, but maybe like just fresh eyes are on it. Um, it's more so. Why would you spoil it, right? <laughs> <clears throat> it's so irritating. Uh, like. Anyway, sorry. I just I like talking about like not showing too much, and then Netflix just like outs the biggest scene in the movie. Just like what the heck? No, I, I agree. But um, but yeah. So the first omen that is April fifth. So really not far. And I honestly totally forgot that we were getting this. So when the teaser dropped, I was like, oh yeah. I didn't remember anything about it at all. I was like, oh okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's really yeah. just a few months away. Yeah, it'll be here before you know it. Yeah. 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 Um, the next trailer is like this weird, cryptic, super top secret trailer that doesn't even have a name for the movie yeah. from Neon. Um, Neon's done a plethora of things. Um, Infinity Pool, I think, is probably one of the more newer ones. Um, but they did Titan. Um, and they've done, is that how you say it? Titan? Yeah. The yeah, one with the girl. Neon Demon girl. was like the model. Neon one. Demon. They've done a bunch of bunch, bunch yeah. of things um a very varied you know portfolio um but yeah so essentially um in the trailer there's like this creepy family photo i think it's only creepy because of the context like maybe if i saw it i would think it's creepy but it looks like it's maybe from the 80s i don't know yeah judging by so. the hairstyles and it's just this family it's a um you know i assume the mom the dad and the daughter and they're just smiling for a photo um, together, family photo, and um, it's a nine one one call, and mm -hmm. it's this dad telling the the dispatcher like, "It's it's it's my daughter." And they say a couple things, and she's like, "Can you stay on the line with me?" And then he goes, "It's not my daughter." And then it just shows this clip of what I assume is a little girl laying like sitting up, kind of awkwardly on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, we don't know what this movie is about. It doesn't have a title. And I mean, talk about smart marketing. Like, I love stuff like that. It's so good, right? Because you're just like, like it eats at you. You're like, well, now I now I need to know what this is. Like, it's like one of those like two second or two two sentence horror stories, right? Yes. It's like you just get like a real snippet that sticks with you, like you said, it's, and like yeah. oh, now I need exactly. More. And so, um, but yeah, it sounds creepy, and I'm very curious about it. Yeah, just from the 30 seconds, like the just the voice acting from the dad. I'm like, ooh, this is intense. Like it, you know, it it, it does stay with you. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean it could it, it could be a million things, right? Like it could be 
a body snatcher story. It could be a possession story. It could be like literally anything. So many directions. And they tend to put out really like unique things, Mm -hmm. which makes it even crazier. As long as it doesn't have Mia Goth in it, I'll watch it. But if it's like, as long as you're not like recasting people that are in, like, I'm hoping this is going to be like, everything about it is going to be unique given the way that they're choosing to start the marketing off. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. get a re rate for Mia Goth. I, get, <laughs> I, get, I love her so much. So it baffles me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm in the minority on it. I think the only other person that agrees with me is Albert. <laughs> oh, fair, fair. I mean, listen, we all have those people. Like I really don't like Timothy Chalamet, but people seem to love him. So. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Timothy Chalamet. He, um, well, he's Wonka now. That kid that plays, is playing I think Wonka. People, I think people like him because he's like, never mind. I don't go down that rabbit hole. It's a, that's a different kind of conversation. But I don't think, I don't think people like him because they just think he's like this fantastic actor. Like, I think there's some other things based on the thirst stuff I see about no, him. Like, people are I think it's different. Yeah. No. Fair. I do want to see Wonka. I heard like mixed stuff. Yeah, the my my family really liked it. No, no, no. I mean I just love the original so much, and it's hard. Like God, I don't I hated like the Johnny the, Depp um... one. Oh, I hate the Johnny Depp. One. Oh my okay. God, I hated it so much. Some people like. Well, the, I think the the kids who were like kids when that came out, like I was already mm-hmm. was that oh five I think, so I was fourteen when that came out, and I had, you know, grew up with just watching the original for. And I love the years. original. Yeah. So like when I came in, I was like, "This is not. This is weird." Um, but I think like the kids who sort of were introduced to Wonka through it, they have a nostalgia thing for it. It's different. Yeah. It's a little different. But um, yeah. I, don't know. I guess. <laughs> I know. But it's uh, weird. It's like yeah. it's weird in like a not good way. Yeah. Like I just didn't like it. It's just like it's creepy, but like not in the creepy way that like Gene Wilder did it. Like Gene Wilder plays sort of like this manic unhinged version of Wonka that was like whoo like creepy but like it almost in almost like a, like a slightly dangerous way i mean yeah also quick scenes of like chickens getting their head cut off like what <laughs> and you and like when you are watching them interact with the gene wilder as wonka there's this constant feeling of distrust constantly yeah. From start to finish, you don't trust him. He starts out in a lie. He starts out walking out like he can't walk. Yeah. And then from then on, you're just like, I don't trust him. I don't like trust I don't. Him, dude. Well, he's not he's, supposed to be like here are slaves. I'm not. Mm-mm. Yeah, he's not like the amazing person you think. <laughs> he is. And I love the contrast, given that he's the the candy man. Like you're supposed to like you know. Yeah. Mm-mm. I don't know. With, 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 we're going on a whole tangent here, but with like Johnny Depp's version, it was just like creepy, like pseudo, pseudo Michael Jackson esque performance. That is such a great way to put it. No, I totally agree. I'm like, I, I totally agree. I think bizarre. Um, <laughs> anyway. yeah, sorry, tangent over <laughs> our last trailer. Uh, not really our last, last trailer, but the last thing we're just talking about that was only the trailer was last night at Terrace Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, this trailer kind of hooked me. I got to be honest, this came, came out of nowhere, and it's coming out on the 16th on VOD. This it's this cult that sort of storms this bowling alley. Like what? Uh, and like while like there's teens and other people bowling, and I guess it's like I think the bowling alley is like closing or something. It's like the last like literally they have it's, like, like the, the timer time set yeah for when it's I think so yeah. Um, but then like, yeah, but then these cult members are coming out of like the bowling, um, the gutters and I love that so much. And they all, yeah, where they're all coming out of the gutter. I'm like, oh man, that's crazy. Um, I, yeah, I guess they're doing some sort of sacrifice thing or something's going on. Um, I'm almost getting like a better version of, um, oh, I, I didn't like the sacrifice game. It was that Christmas movie that we just had on Shudder. Um, I didn't watch it. Not a fan of that. I enjoyed it. Like. The first, like first couple of acts, the third act lost me. Like, whoa! So I hope this, I hope this one sticks in the landing. It doesn't look like there's like a supernatural element per se, like not like explicitly. There's like a little like weirdness going on at the beginning, 
where like isn't wasn't there like a talisman or something you know typical culty stuff but yeah but that doesn't always equate to it doesn't mean like the supernatural the is like real right it could just be like they think it is yeah um but either way you know it looks it looks intense it looks like it could be pretty brutal and um yeah. I, I have a feeling this might be a sleeper hit like this might be just something that sneaks up on us and like you know, a little a little indie darling on VOD. Yeah, the guy that is doing this is the guy that did one of the segments from VHS2. And I'm blanking on which one it is, but he's everything he's done. Yeah. I've really liked. So I'm oh, yeah. very excited about this. I I don't know. It's like I feel like I'm in like a weird lull with horror. Like I've been watching yeah. stuff and I've just been like. You know, like, I'm just like, ugh. And there hasn't been a lot of things that have, like, made me excited or, like, I got really pumped about. But this was one of the first things so far um, I saw because I followed the guy that made it. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But I follow him on Twitter and he posted the trailer, which is how I was like, oh, like, we got to talk about this. Okay. And, um, yeah, no, this looks so good. And I think, I feel like, I don't know, obviously, I don't know for sure. but. I feel like there is going to be some other like twisted story element that we oh, won't sure. get until most of the way through the experience. And that has me also really excited. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, like some third act twist that they're going to sneak in there. Mm. I um I didn't realize. Yeah, so this is actually um, a partnership between Epic Pictures and Dread Central. Dread Central, yeah. Um. So, okay, okay. So there's a little backing behind this. So maybe that's why it yeah. feels a little more polished. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. but it is yeah. still just a VOD release. So um I'm excited. That's yeah, what I'll um, probably pay to watch. Yeah, this is what it's really what 10 days away. Um yeah. no, I'm gonna check this out. So I'll be VOD, so that'll just probably be like whatever service you use, whether to pay for rentals. Yeah. And then because yeah, I can do it right through YouTube TV, but like if you have to I do my off, most of mine through Amazon. Amazon, you could do it through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So literally anywhere. But that's really it for, well, just trailers. Because our next trailer also comes with a slew of news. Yeah. Um, we've had an interesting, like, new, like, change in the horror scene where we're getting these, like, kid classics that are going into public domain and can now be made horror characters. You know, last year we got, last year? Mm -hmm. Blood and Honey. Was that last year? Was that 23? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, because Blood and Honey might have been 22. 22. So, Blood and Honey. Well, but we've got Blood rolls. and Honey. We got the mean one. Yeah. And so, now we've got Mickey Mouse horror, which Mickey has gone into the public domain as of, what, like, two a week ago or something like that? Two weeks yeah. ago? And the fact that there are movies already made means that like they knew they were like they, okay. coming. Yeah, they were like ready for it yeah and so we've got we've got two films that are coming out one is called a mickey a mickey mousetrap and then the other one is going to be steamboat willie now i do think mickey mousetrap is probably going to have to change its name right because mickey mouse isn't in the public domain steamboat willie is in the public domain right so mickey mouse and the way mickey mouse looks and dresses and the name and all of that is protected, I think. So I think the name for that is going to have to change. Um, yeah, the well, design is just Steamboat Willie. So they should be fine. Like the mask of the killer is just. Old classic mouse is what it looks old like. Classic mouse. So I think they're safe there. Yeah. And Scott, Scott from You Run had done a post about this and like the dangers of like going up against Disney because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very, that, that's very scary for filmmakers. Um, but the people who are doing Steamboat Willie is, um, directed by the same person who did the mean one. So it won't be their first rodeo with doing something, you know, that is coming from out of, out of copyright or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, they're both set to release like first quarter of this year. Um, but we got, we actually got a trailer for the mousetrap one. Yeah. Um, which I mean, it, it par for the course it is what it is um it doesn't look like i mean it's low budget for sure but <laughs> i mean they got to film in like an arcade and the arcade looks kind of cool and that sort of adds like cool. 
it adds a little value to the location. Yeah. You know, it makes it look a little like there's a little bit more of a budget behind it. Um, I really, I mean, I really just, you know, I don't like comedy horror and I'm like really finicky about that kind of stuff. But like these types of things, I'm genuinely, I'm like really open to like, I still need to see Mary had a lamb or Mar- Mary, had a lamb, Mary had a little lamb or Mary's lamb or whatever it's called. I still need to see that. I never saw the mean one and I still haven't seen blood and honey. I have different reasons for not supporting blood and honey, but I really want to watch them though, because they intrigue me because these are things that like I grew up with, we grew up with. And so I'm like really open to these things. And I feel like for most of what I'm seeing, a lot of people are like really intrigued by these concepts of like taking something that is now in public domain and making it like a horror movie. So yeah, there seems to be an interest, I think, um, for stuff like this. So I'm just going to be curious to see Disney's hand for this and what they will and won't allow. Something about one of Scott's posts said something about, what did it say? It was something about the hat. There's oh, like a specific like, like, hat or something. It like Steamboat Willie, because Steamboat Willie wears a hat, right? So yeah. if you're going to do that character. He can't have a hat. You can't have right. a hat, or you can't have the hat if Steamboat Willie had the hat. I don't remember, but there was something about him. He was talking about like wardrobe, basically, that like there's there is some stuff that's still very much protected and you can't use. So you have to kind of tweak it, I don't know, to make it work. I don't know. I don't remember what it like, said now. It was a I really long that, Instagram post. Yeah, I know. I posted on Scott's uh post. And I, and I, but I remember South Park recently did a whole Disney episode <laughs> and they included so many characters that they owned. And I'm like, does it just legally fit under parody? I mean, South Park has been doing it for a long time, so they probably know the ins and outs, but like it's there, like they did it. And the parody thing is tricky. Like it's yeah. not, that's not black and white because like, I got really mad when I got dinged early on for doing trailer reviews or I mean, mm-hmm. um, trailer reacts. And I was like, well, maybe I could do something funny where I like act it out really badly. And that, and then I like react to it. Like I'm watching the real trailer, but then like I was looking into like the parody laws and the things that like go, it's, it's very convoluted. Yeah. Cause really, I mean, it's like, well, cause I'm even thinking of like those stupid movies, like the, Epic movie, date movie, disaster movie, scary Jesus. movie. Yeah. Like, they don't own all that stuff. Like, how did they get away with all of that? And it was just fine. No. I don't know. I It's, you really, you got to really have a team of people that are telling you. Like, you got you to have some lawyers. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be lawyers involved. So there was a movie that came out in 2013 called Escape from Tomorrow. That is a Disneyland. Yeah. I, I guess it was horrific to watch. I can tell you that. So I don't know if it's, it kind of constitutes as horror, but I think it's supposed to be kind of like a psychological film of like this guy who is getting ready to go on, or he's on vacation, Disney vacation with his wife and his kids, but he loses his job. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of his like descent into like madness from like, what am I going to do? Like, I think he's the only one that has a job. Like, what are we going to, yeah. you know, all these things, but it was just a terrible movie. Like, there's parts of this that are just like, okay. First of all, you cannot take a movie, film it in color, and then just make it black and white and post edit. It doesn't look the same as no, films no, no. that were made in black and white because white, I mean, because the color wasn't an option. Right. And so it just looks like a really cheap edit over of this black and white coloring. But there's like these moments where this guy is like creeping on some like 13 year old girls and he's like 40 disgusting and it's disgusting. And it made me so uncomfortable in such a non fun way. I didn't even finish the movie, but I remember reading about the fact that Disney was so unbothered by his movie attempt that they didn't pursue it. No, they were like, this is, you know, whatever. they're like, this sucks. Like I'm not worried about it. And so it's just interesting because that movie was allowed to be made. I mean, it has the Disney, font in the title like or the mickey is more like more hand is in it huh like mickey's hand is in the poster i think yeah it kind of reminds me of bendy and the ink machine like yeah poster but um but yeah so it's like but disney was just like (laughs) 
my husband and I had such a blast. I mean, it's a horrible movie, but my husband and I have a tradition of like we love watching shitty movies. Uh-huh. So like you know yeah, like Troll Two and like Silent Night Deadly Night Two, um, uh, Mono's Hands of Fate. Like, like there's all there's a whole list of like really shitty movies. Yeah, um, and, and this this became one of them. <laughs> and that and I quote it. It came out in 2013, so 11 years later, I still quote it. There's a part where the main guy, Jim, he's like, he gets his wife something. It's like it's like the wrong character, and she goes, Dumbo, I want Minnie Mouse Jim. Minnie Mouse. Oh, yes. And so we just go to each other and go, Minnie Mouse Jim. Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Um, and then there's another part where, like, the evil woman, whatever, she's like the evil witch queen, yes. whatever, she's like... She's like up with the, like his daughter or someone up in like a little like the the t- uh, I think they're in Dumbo, and yeah. she, they're like wave to our fans, wave, wave. I mean, camp, but <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. I hated it so much. Like, but it was just an interesting thing to see about like their because mm-hmm. I was like, how does this exist? Because Disney's like Disney does not play. And so I was like, okay, well, they must not have, but it's, they just didn't care. They well, weren't he bothered. Um, I think he got away with it because I mean, they were in the park, so like, mm-hmm. I think the iconography is obviously Disney, but he didn't. I don't think he put any logos on the camera. Maybe like, not. There were no. But like, maybe it was just at- down to like semantics. Right. Well, because they they were like, let's say, like standing outside of Space Mountain. He didn't film the sign that said Space Mountain. You were just like seeing maybe part of the ride and you're like oh that's clearly space mountain but like it could be anything you have to have permission to like pu- well i guess not well you need not, a not anymore business. but yeah. but you could just also film a family video at disney yeah. world yeah you know like what you're acting or you're just filming your family member you know what i mean like, it, it could be anything right yeah where's the line yeah i'll be curious to see how these two fare up once you know it will be interesting. I mean, the trailers were out there. At least, well, the trailer for Mouse Trap. The trap, Mouse Trap. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Everyone will be keeping their eye on this because it is really interesting. Um, it is it's going to be a a real lesson. Um, because now it, it, we're in quite an interesting part of history, right? Where like, yeah, we're living in a time where things are going to the public domain because so much of like what's popular in pop culture right now started a hundred years ago, right? Like now that we're kind of getting to that point, it's like, wow, like it's going to be quite very, very interesting. It is. Yeah. No, it's very interesting. Um, But anything else before we hop on to the next? No. Shoe. Um, so the next uh, story is Blumhouse and Atomic Monster are going to be merging or have merged um in a partnership uh so atomic monster uh for those that don't know that's james wan that's the conjuring um mm-hmm. annabelle like all that stuff um mm-hmm. where blumhouse obviously insidious the halloween trail like we, you know yeah. we know blumhouse. rated r pg-13 right right so atomic yeah. monster um uh, malignant right i think that's oh. right so it's yeah. like so anything really that james wan has worked on so this merger is really interesting because it could go one of two ways, right? It could sort of be like Blumhouse watering down what Atomic Monster is able to com- like produce, or Atomic Monster helps elevate, brings. you know, rising tide, you know, brings, you know, raises all ships or something, right? High tide raises all ships. I forgot. Whatever, however that saying goes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah. hoping it's that, right? That Atomic Monster sort of helps um, Blumhouse just create a stronger identity. I mean, Blumhouse isn't just like, they're not like miss after miss after miss. I mean, there are some like gems in there. Um, but, <laughs> but, right. Like, lately, I think- lately in specific, though, it's been rocky. They, they, they've had been at a, you know, a rough, few years blumhouse they're doing imaginary right they're, they are doing imaginary which looks promising but it's also pg-13 but it's gonna be pg-13 which again doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad they but... just don't push it they don't push the envelope they don't get the most out of their pg-13 that's part of the issue but yeah right 
maybe they, they play it too safe. And I'm like, well, is yeah. that sort of the MPA getting on their case or are they really playing it too safe and like cutting more than they should? Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I, I think, think I don't know. I'm not um I'm not I'm nervous about it. Yeah. Well, I um yeah. I don't think I mean there's, I mean, as far as like the Conjuring universe, there's definitely some misses there. Like, please, no more nun movies. But like, there's also je there's a lot. Like, I I like a lot more of what James Wan has done in mm -hmm. horror than I do Blumhouse. Yeah. And um and that's they're the two bigger players, especially right now. And you just you don't want them to like like to at least from what I've seen based on what I've seen in like um like interviews and stuff like Jason is very like, um, like I, I worry that he's not going to want to actually collaborate. I worry about control. Whereas James Wan is like, yeah, cool. Like he's like very down to earth, very like, like yeah. balanced. And, and, it's, and, and when he works with people, it's a collaborative effort. I don't know that I get that from Blumhouse. So I'm, no. that's the part that's concerning is like, did James Wan just sell his soul like to end up pushing out, you know, mediocre PG-13 horror movies? Or is it going to be a collaborative effort? Because I think together, if they're both open and they work together in, in positive ways, I think it could be really great for the horror community. But like you said, it has the total pasta. It's literally 50-50. Yeah. I mean, I, my hope is like if you get James Wan, you're going to let James Wan be. James Wan, and James you're gonna Wan. let him do what he does. He's good. He's yeah, so good at what he does. He's very, very good at what he does. Yes. Um, you know where I feel like yeah. Blumhouse has sort of become this monolithic sort of entity where they're. I don't know. It's like a, 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 it's like a car factory, mm -hmm. like mass produced things. It's very like they've oversaturated themselves. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're not like letting artists sort of branch and do their own thing. Right. And I don't, yeah. And I don't, um, I just don't know how that's gonna. I hope this sort of does what like, well, A24 didn't merge with anybody, but A24 has now sort of branched out and they're letting people just be creative like you used to be able to say like oh yeah that looks like an a24 movie but now it's like with things like talk to me and like bodies 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 like things are just like they're letting people sort of just experiment you know which is good because we as the the viewers the people who are paying to watch the movies or want to watch the movies we're looking for a variety of things we're tired of the same stuff over and over again and it's mm -hmm. when you let people be creative and you stop putting control on them and and watering them down like you said like then that's when the really good stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I hope this sort of is a case of like, you know, Jason Blum's more or less like just tapping in James Wan be like, help us. <laughs> I would love that. So I really do love, I have so much respect for James Wan and what he yeah. has done in horror. Like from the dolls he's made to the directing, to the writing, like the things that he's done, I just, I really have a lot of respect for him. And I, I do not feel that way about Blumhouse. I just don't. No. no. I just don't. Um, I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Blumhouse, oh, that's technically Insidious, right? Which was James Wan. Yeah. So. But that's why it's good. <laughs> I was going to say, he's technically birthed Blumhouse in the sense of like, that's yeah, really. Yeah, no, like, for sure. Yeah, they've worked know. together. Uh, previously kind of insidious is see that's an example of PG-13 where you're really kind of pushing the the limits well, they, yeah there. they try to push it for sure yeah but and it's but they're good they're scary they're scary these PG-13 movies that Blumhouse is doing right now are just not it for me except Megan I love Megan I still haven't seen Megan it's on my list <laughs> well that's different like that's a film that also embraces its campiness but without sort of being like a yeah, party har har laugh out loud comedy. It's just as like we're gonna just lean in, and this may sound weird and silly, but we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, either way, you know, I, 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 we're not really gonna see the effects of this merger until like next year. Like we're gonna see like because they're gonna now they're gonna start to write the scripts 
get into pre some ideas and... together because no, they, really they have separate projects still. Yeah. That aren't out yet. Well, they got to like, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's for this one. I'm trusting you, James Wan. Like, <laughs> if you made this decision, I have to trust that it was the right thing. <laughs> Yeah. There must have been something in the deal that made him go, okay, this makes sense. Right. Yeah, he's not dumb. He wouldn't have done the move if he didn't think it could be beneficial. No. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, so our last little bit of news slash trending is um, there is a new game that just dropped on Xbox on January 3rd that people are calling like a Bioshock-esque game. And you know, when I see the word Bioshock, I'm like, I hone into it. Um, and so um, it's called Close to the Sun. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a short synopsis of the story. An unbound utopia for research, independent from state and isolated from the gaze of society, free to push the boundaries of matter and time. Journalist Rose Archer steps aboard the Helios in search of her sister, Ada. She quickly discovers not all is as it seems. Um, this looks so pretty. Have you seen the the piece? Yeah. The, so the trailer's yeah. old. So I I think this yeah. is, this is the first time. I think this is just coming to Xbox, but I think it's been on PlayStation. Out. Yeah. Mm. So this is the first time I think it's coming to Xbox. But I'm happy we're covering it because I had no, I had no idea this game existed. I so. didn't know it existed either, and we both we both have love for Bioshock. So it's love, like, love for Bioshock, love for just this like Lovecraftian esque horror, and um, I love it. It's, it is a beautiful game. You're right. It's like I, yeah, it looks really good. Um, now, now that it's coming to Xbox, I don't know if they did any sort of remastering because it is a few years old. Um, yeah, I never heard of it. I neither have I. I don't know, but it look. I mean, I like. I like. It really, sort of, you know, that uncovering a mystery feels very story driven, mystery driven. Yeah. Um, with some like nice scares. Uh, the style, I love that again. Holy it's very, cow! So yeah, the like original 20... release was May second, twenty nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have played it if I knew. It How did we miss this? That's wild. Yeah. Um. No clue. It's done no by clue. Storm and a Teacup and Warp Digital. Yeah, it, yeah, no, it really looks like a fun. I don't even know if it's on PC. I'll play it on Xbox. If it, if it, if I'll it, play it on Xbox. Yeah, but if I'm curious, I'm going to go on Steam right now. As um, as we're just, you know, I love that. The wonders of the, wonders of the internet. Just get live updates as we're chatting. Um, yeah, I know. I opened up the thing because I wanted to see who had developed it and when the original release date for it was. To the sun. Yeah, twenty bucks. It made me think more of um, Bioshock Infinite primarily. I see yeah. in general Bioshock vibes, but it definitely made me think more Bioshock Infinite, which I absolutely loved. The ending well, to Bioshock a, Infinite was just like, poof, my mind was blown. Because you're on a vessel, right? Yep. And, yeah. and so that's very infinite because you're technically, it's a city in the sky, but you feel like you're more on a vessel, whereas like Rapture, you're like, underwater you, yeah you feel a little more like trapped it's different well and it's then this different. concept of like where it says like free to push the boundaries of matter and time that's very infinite as well mm -hmm. yeah oh apparently yeah, so we do a whole slew of games this company mm -hmm. those who remain yep from so this apparently this came out on steam in 2020 so and I was a lot of games. The only in reason it caught my attention is because somebody compared it to Bioshock. Yeah, no, it like it totally ring, rings all those. Um, I was, you know, I was just telling you, yeah, because I just got Bioshock on Steam, mm -hmm. eleven bucks, all three games, all the DLCs, season pass, everything for like less than a McDonald's meal. That's <laughs> that awesome. Like, in. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Like hours of content, but anyway. This I'm going to be adding to my wish list because this looks really fun. Yeah. No, it looks really good. So I don't know how we missed it, but it just came out on Xbox a couple days ago. So I'm excited yeah. to check it out one day. And like I said, 2020, I was doing a lot of gaming because we all know where we all were that year. <laughs> That's, That's, true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That's our last. Um, 
Yep. Bit of news. I mean, I know before we get to shout outs, I mean, do we want to announce voices news? Yeah. Voices news and trending. <laughs> voices news and trending. So this is going to be a big year. So um, if you've noticed from our content thus far, we are officially part of the You Run podcast network. So mm -hmm. we've added a fancy little logo um, and we will be on a monthly basis advertising a You Run podcast network show. Mm -hmm. um, this month it's Video Tasties. Um, we'll always put a link um, to their stuff below. Yeah. Um, so definitely check them out. Um, but in addition to becoming part of this larger network, uh, we are pushing out more voices content. So we will be putting out a monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to include a content recap for the month, uh, some mm -hmm. reviews uh, by friends of the show. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do a formal uh, announcement of who uh, they'll sort yeah. of. Yeah. They'll get their own spotlight for sure. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're going to do like fun monthly challenges, recommendations, uh, it's, it, giveaways, probably when that all sort of gets announced, things to sort of keep up with there. So that's all going to be a, like a monthly newsletter. Yep. Um, and then our next big announcement is uh, Patreon. We're going to do uh, bonus content, uh, merch giveaways, uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to sort of run down the sort of the tiers we have in mind? Yeah. Um, and since you were the one working on it, you may have to kind of remind me what they are in order. But I know. So like, so we're, there's four or five tiers. There is. So the, so the $1 tier yeah. is the, um, you are a part of the recently deceased. So you will get a, um, a spotlight in the credits. You'll be added to yep. uh, a Patreon. Uh, thank you. Um, at the end of every one of our main shows. Yep. Um, for three dollars, you are a bone collector. You will be uh, entered into our sticker club. So Angel you'll notice our smirks, how proud we are of these names. <laughs> I am. We we worked they hard to come up with clever, cute. um, you know, mausoleum adjacent themes. Yeah, so fun. So yes, yeah, so the bone collector. You're going to be entered into the sticker club. So you're going to be um, sent a, a monthly sticker, and it could be um, art from the show. Uh, we might be do you know different styles, shiny, not shiny, different, yeah. you know. So it's going to be sort of random, or um, it's going to be unique every month. So then you'll kind of yeah. collect it. You know, you can make a little sticker book. You could do whatever, you, whatever you want with it. Put yeah, them on and it computer. won't be things that like are already in the world. It will be things you can only get through being in the sticker club. They'll be original designs. Original um, designs. And I, yeah. And I think you know, just for a tease. So the first month we're going to do a special edition coffee crib sticker. And yeah. so it won't, it won't always be show specific, but it will always be horror specific. So. Right. Um, right. So we might do some yeah. franchise stuff. We might do, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to get creative. We'll plan them out. We're, we'll try to plan them out like sort of, month, you know, a few at a time in advance to sort of get an idea. Yeah. Um, but then let's see. So that's the $3 one. And then for $5, you are, oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Was it three dollars? You were the mystic. Five dollars. You were a bone collector. Oh, you're right. See, I... <laughs> yes. Sorry for three. So five dollars. <laughs> you're a bone collector. Three dollars. You're a mystic, and then you get access to our voices uh, Discord channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we're putting that together, or it's pretty much done. Um, yeah. The Discord channel, uh, and there might, and there's going to be uh, like bonus content, extra episodes. Uh, and then you get an entry into a giveaway. Mm -hmm. Which we're going to uh, do monthly? Uh, which uh, we'll do a monthly giveaway. Um, yeah. And that could be uh, a, a DVD Blu-ray. Merch. Merch. It can be mm -hmm. like a handful of things. We'll, and we'll, we'll announce that ahead of time too. Uh, but yeah. if you're in that tier, you automatically get entered. Uh, and then I think for ten dollars, yeah, ten dollars, you are a grave digger, um, and that one you are. Oh, what, now I'm totally blanking on what that, what that tier is. <laughs> That's the the hangout, right? That's the hang. Yes, you get access to monthly hangouts or events. So uh, there'll be one a month. Uh, they'll probably occur at on the Discord channel. Um, 
And it's either going to be sort of like a happy hour, a trivia night, uh, a movie or TV watch along. Maybe there'll be like, if there's a TV premiere that's special that month. Maybe we'll do that. Um, or we might pick a different movie. Um, but trivia, you know, so it, it, could, it could be sort of any of that. And that'll be rotation um, yeah. every month. And then the last one, uh, you are a Crypt Keeper. And that is a producer. You become a producer of the show. Uh, mm-hmm. There's only a handful of those. Some of these have like limited numbers. Um, yeah. But yeah, you become a producer of the show. Mm-hmm. So you get uh, producer credit uh, at the end of every episode. You, after two months of being a producer, you will get a producer's uh, shirt or sweater, or we'll figure it out, you know, um, probably, probably a t shirt. Yeah. I feel like that's a general crowd pleaser. And then. Yes. Uh, you also uh, get to pretty much like produce an episode of something. So you get in a rotational basis, all the producers get to pick topics. Uh, and it could be a topic mm-hmm. for a show like The Coffee Crypt or remakes or uh, yeah. found footage or one, you know, one of the existing shows. Or if it's a topic that you want to see co- sort of covered specifically, it could be its own sort of special edition episode. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I hit them all. Yep. Yeah, so that's going to roll out. I think we'd said the 15th. 15th or the 16th? 15th. The 15th. Monday, right? Maybe the 15th. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and just to kind of like ease any concerns, because, you know, we put feelers out to figure out if people would actually even be interested in a Patreon or like what people's honest thoughts were on the mm-hmm. concept of Patreons, because it feels, it can feel weird sometimes the content creator be like, oh, like, support financially what we're doing already but the thing is is we wanted like we really thought about these tiers and making sure that they were unique enough that they were worth their value and not just you know oh an extra episode of something that we're already doing or like it's all going to be very unique and the content that is on youtube already is not going to change having a patreon does not mean less content it doesn't mean more watered down content the content will remain the same. So anybody who's worried about that, I just wanted to say that because that was one of the things that I got feedback about was, you know, like paying channels to do stuff they're already doing. And then the free stuff gets like less lower quality. And that's just not how we do things. So it won't be, it won't be handled that way. These, we just wanted to make sure these were very unique things that were worth what people might would be, you know, willing to sign up for. So. Yeah, and I think like a big part of it was like, yeah, with the tears, it's like, you know, you guys get something tangible. You get something yes. that's sort of specific and like Angel said, it's like special. And yeah. Um, and I think a big part of it too is like I know I want we wanted to do a Discord. We wanted to sort of focus on community is a big part of it, right? Just like a friendly open space to just enjoy what we love about horror and um mm-hmm. to be a community and have that space. Um yeah, you know. And they yeah. get some stickers and shirts and stuff. So that's and fun. some fun things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's going. Yeah. So Jan- uh, January 15th, that Monday, um, we'll have a bigger post sort of explaining everything as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the newsletter will probably be the end of the month. So maybe January 31st, about so. And that's going to be a recap of a lot of, you know, everything monthly content. And then on top of that, other, other fun stuff I mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so that's it. So exciting news for voices. Um, mm-hmm. Now that brings us over to recommendations and shout outs. And um, mm-hmm. I could just do sort of a quick, um, I've been watching and I got our friend Chris to watch uh, Monarch oh. Legacy of Monsters mm-hmm. on Apple. Yep. They've been enjoying the heck out of it. Um, yeah. It's, you know, again, very... Um, yeah, I know your worry is like if it's more people heavy than creature heavy, and it, it well, is, yeah, it's just not my thing. If it's it's a little yeah. more people focused, um, yeah. be, which is fine. I think with this new movie, though, I think the movie is going to be more creature focused. <laughs> it feels yeah. very creature focused. Um, the new uh, Godzilla Kong movie, but this, yeah. I feel like it's done. It's done really well. It feels like it's tie. It ties directly to like a lot of the lore and the sort of the government response to the kaiju, the titans. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just sort of like, it fills in a lot of gaps in a sort of a very fun, creative way. And I love this like family dynamic aspect of it, um, Mm -hmm. where it really feels like a legacy of like the people in the 50s 
who sort of discovered Godzilla and then passing on the torch to like these younger folks. And, yeah. Um, there's like queer representation in it, which is fun, which we don't get in any of the movies really. So like, that's a bonus. Um, and I don't know. I mean, and the creatures that they do have are cool. Like there's this one, this isn't too much of a spoiler, but uh, I think in the, in the 2014 Godzilla film, there is, I think it's in the credits. There's like footage of Godzilla in like the fifties. And it's like this like raw sort of like black and white footage. Mm -hmm. They go to that moment in the oh, show. Okay. So there's like really cool sort of tie-ins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it like takes place uh, sort of shortly after the, the original movie. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. So uh, King of Monsters hasn't happened yet. Um, right. So it's like in between one and two. Uh, but yeah, no, it's really fun. You know, and, the, and, and for, for once, the human story is engaging. Hmm. But yeah, but we're going to, uh, Chris and I are going to cover it in, in our, what have become our regular TV recaps because yeah. now he's like my TV buddy. Um, yeah. So it's been fun. So yeah, because we what we did we did Usher, we did uh Goosebumps. Goosebumps. So this, will be, this will be our third one. Yeah. 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 So I'll be so keep an eye out. That might be, I think the finale is in a week or two. So mm -hmm. as soon as that finale this airs, too. yeah, we're gonna do the a full season recap. Okay. That'd be good. Yeah. Um yeah, so mine is um my shout out for this week is an artist that I found on Twitter. Um her name is Wolf Skull Jack. Um she's a digital artist. I don't remember off the top. I can't remember if she paints for sure or not. But um she also volunteers at a wolf shelter. Oh. So she does a lot of wolf stuff, okay? So she had posted a print a while ago just advertising her work. And I went and looked on the website immediately and it was not available. And <laughs> I, I commented and I was like, is there any chance you are going to have more prints of this soon? Like yeah. any chance. And she's like, you know what? Yeah. Like I'll, I'll set it up to do some more prints. So I ran and ordered one and this is the print. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. That's really good. The maybe I'll send you a picture of it to post with this because the glare isn't like I mean, yeah, the, I mean, you 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 got it just because you were you know, moving in, so I got to see it, you know. But it is like it's 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 stunning. Like, first of all, you know how I am about werewolves. Oh, that's much better without the yeah. Oh. Forget it. That that's that's so cool. It almost reminds me of the, the Hemlock Grove transformation, the way it's sort of tearing through. God. And it's on like hefty, like I don't know what this is. But it's, it's like, like more of like a is it like a glossy paper? No, it's like cardstock, but like oh. a little bit denser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, I don't know what she does her prints on. Um but but she does. I mean, she has other stuff too. But she does wolves a lot. It's her thing. And then um, and then I got some other things in here. Let me see. <laughs> I hadn't even opened it all the way yet because it came around Christmas. But like, yeah, like. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, that's cool. She does amazing work, and she's so nice. Like I went and ordered, like when I tell you I ran, when she posted that they were available, I was like, like straight to the internet. I was like, I have to get one. Um, Girl, she does not make more. She shipped it with care. Like, <sighs> I've got some horror comic ideas in mind, girl. If the, she, if she does comic stuff, I would partner with her. She's fantastic. Like her art is so great. And I, um, it's so funny. I was laughing because she doesn't always post a lot of stuff of like what she looks like. And so she did recently, like, I think like an artist introduction or something. A lot of people are doing that because it's like 2024. And so they're just kind of re redoing that for new followers and stuff. And she was like, it's so funny. People's reactions when they find out I'm not some like six foot, 250 pound, like biker guy. <laughs> that <does> these sandwiches. <laughs> but, um, 
God, it's stunning. Her work is, and this isn't, this doesn't even scratch the surface. Like we'll have links to her stuff and you need to go browse her website, but she was just amazing. And the fact that she like was willing to put something up for print that was unavailable because people were asking about it, I thought was really kind and really sweet. Yeah. And I'm so excited to have that print. It'll be up soon. Eventually. I'm probably going to get a frame for it, but, um, oh, you should frame it, but definitely. it's stunning. Like, Anyway, and she was really nice to work with. And it came in super fast and she shipped it with such care. And I got extra mm. goodies, which I always love getting. And so. Um, it always sweetens the pot. But yeah, no, she's fantastic. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. Wolf Skull Jack. Yeah, I am literally going to go check her out as soon as we're done. Because <laughs> that that is some, that really was <laughs> some beautiful work. When I saw the picture and it wasn't available, I was like, why would you do this to me right now? Like, I was like, I cannot rest until, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. I still, it's so, it's so funny you bring up, I've, I'm getting a little more into wolves. Well, one, because of your book. And then <laughs> I've been playing, I told you, I've been playing Neverwinter, which is like an open world mm -hmm. D&D thing. And I got yeah. a hellhound as a mount that I can ride around on. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's so badass. And that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm all about wolves. And it's and she does other stuff, obviously, like you saw the falcon and the monster. She has other stuff besides um, wolves. But there is a lot of really just stunning wolf art. And as someone who feels like there just isn't enough of it, I just like, I was like, oh, I was meant to find this page. I didn't even know how I found it. I think it was like one of those recommended things on at the FYPs or whatever for Twitter. But um, mm -hmm. it just like, I saw that and I was just like, I have to own that. Like. I mean, when you must, you must. Oh my god, so good. When but anyway, so that's my call. that's my shout for this week. Wolf Skull Jack. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's another edition of the Coffee Crypt, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Lots of stuff to follow. Exciting recommendations. Fun voice news. Um, lots coming up. But um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else to add? I don't think so. If you if you want if you have opinions on Patreon, genuinely, oh, yeah. I would love the feedback. I I'm just very curious and like what the like, the, you know, the viewers and stuff are going to think of it. Um, so I'm I just wanted to say we we welcome feedback on such things like always like always looking to improve and and what people say um, to an extent. There's some people who say things and we don't care what they say, but the, but a lot of times like if if you're someone who has like an opinion or something you would like to see or Please always, always tell us what it is. We are open to all of that feedback and thought. So, yeah, you know, I know it's like we. I know we didn't approach the the the, the idea of a Patreon lightly. You know, I think no. it's just sort of, um, you know, it's like we want to be able to give more to people who support us as well. Mm -hmm. And this is like a part time job, right? As much as we love it, you know, yeah. the Patreon it's a lot of work. Patreon will help sort of, um, you know, like I have, you know, it sort of helps with like editing software. Like anything that we make through the Patreon is going to go. Upgrades to equipment right that could be better. Yeah. You know, when we want to do unboxings for things like exactly. it would just be, um, it is, it all goes back into the channel. So we'll be able to do like really good giveaways. Like it, it's sort of yeah. like everything is just going to just explore, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. but yeah, you know, be yeah, it. No, definitely. I think, I think, you know, Angel and I, I think, I think we both sort of pride ourselves, right. And sort of like, we're open-minded, like we're, we're yeah. open to like suggestions and people's feelings. And I think, um, yeah. I think you put it beautifully there. Yeah. So, and I just, I just want people to know, like, we are open for that feedback. If you have thoughts, I mean, I, we definitely want to hear them. We, we want, we can't grow without making, you know, doing what, what people want to see from us and, yeah. and care about. We need to know that we won't know if they don't tell us so. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Can't say it better myself. Yeah. Sometimes you are so still and you're not saying anything while I'm talking. It looks like my computer froze. Oh. So if I'm ever just like staring at you for a minute, sorry. Like you were so still. And then you said <laughs> something. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, I Maybe it's, just, I don't know. Well, it's not as bad as like with my husband and I, he'll like ask me a question. And I, this is why I think I have like ADD or something. It takes a second for my brain to process what he says to me. And I'm like, and then I don't respond. And he like, he drives him nuts. But I'm like, I'm literally like, 
it's not like it's, I'm not. It's going to get there eventually. It's, 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 I don't know. I go for a second. So like, I think maybe that's part of it. It's like, if I'm like really still, it's like, it's because I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> very like, intently. I'm, very, like, <laughs> I'm listening. Anyway, but yeah, I just think it's funny because every time I'm like, is he frozen? No, okay. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, we do have um two episodes that are going to come out this week that I think we're both excited about and it's going to kind of shed some spotlight on our friend Scott from the UN podcast, who is now officially a filmmaker. Um, yeah, yeah. His, his first film came out um, December 20th. It's available on YouTube. I'll just give him an extra shout here, but we actually sat down with Scott this weekend to talk about his process, all the things he had to overcome for this found footage movie, all the things he did. And so his interview about the film will come out on Tuesday and then Friday because it's found footage. You guessed it. Tom and I are going to be covering it on found footage Friday. So very excited to be kind of shedding some light on some up and coming filmmakers because, you know, we care a lot about the indie scene and we really want to help support it. So very excited about that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this uh, Sunday new to our, our first coffee cup for 2024. So um, mm. have a good and rest I hope of the Northeast. Y'all survived uh, the blizzard. <laughs> Oh, is there a blizzard? Well, blizzard. I mean, I think we're going to be okay for the most part, but yeah, I don't know. Some folks are may, may not be so lucky. Well, then yes, I hope everybody's okay. We don't get that down here. I have no idea. So yeah. Um. Anyway, but thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great week coming up. And Steve and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Also, in case you missed it in the previous video, make sure that you go check out this awesome YouTube channel called Video Tasties. Uh, the slogan is protecting the past one VHS tape at a time. Um, these guys do a lot of media stuff. Um, 80s list, top list, physical media collaborations, um, anything movie, film related, um, you can find uh, there. There's some awesome, um, like tons of, tons of, tons of stuff for you to check out on their channel. I'll make sure to link them in the description for this episode.